Welcome to our next tutorial of Quick Surface. So we built our model, which looks okay, but the question is how accurate it is and how can we make it in the best way so it can be used for manufacturing and meet our expectations. So what do I mean with this? This object has been created with um, different sketches, which have, they have been revolved, and then there is a lot of trimming here. But if we look at the sketch now, we may need to do this much more accurate and much more precise and to meet our expectations. So when you open a sketch, you see some symbols here and one of them is what it's called um, um, coincident constraint. So we provide some constraints here to, me, to control our sketch. In this case, if I just try to move, as you see, the two points meet together. So how, what can I do now if I want to move only one? You just select this and then you delete or use the delete key on the keyboard and the connection here will be detached. When we move the point and if they snap together, automatically this new constraint will be created. And we call this coincident constraint. What other constraints? What else we can do? If we have a line, for example, we can select the line and a pop-up menu appears offering some of the uh, constraints which you immediately can create. The other option to do this is if you have a selection, you just right click on the screen and you get some uh, constraints here and some actions which you can do. For example, you can make this horizontal, you can make it vertical, then if you have a connection between two primitives you may create a tangent relation so you can make two lines parallel and perpendicular we'll go through this in a minute so in this case i'll just say that this is my horizontal and i click here and make this vertical uh, for these constraints you see some symbols on the screen which are active and then i can just select this and we'll have a horizontal line Let's go a bit further and explore more about the other constraint. As you see here, we have a um, connection only of these points, which means they're, they're coincident, but there is no other relation between these two. So, in, but in here, we have something which is called tangency constraint, which means that even if I move the, the line, as you see, they stay tangent. You can apply tangency for all the primitives, such as the tangency between two arcs, tangency between uh, two splines, line and splines, etc. So what can we do in this case here is that I can just select the point and it offers me to make this point tangent. The other option is if you just click on the um, constraint itself for faster um, access you just click here and say make this tangent now we know that this is a perfectly tangent relation the same thing will apply here I can just make this tangent so now my sketch is improved even more so what else we can see here in this case there is an angle between the two lines so we also support the dimensions and let's play a little bit with them. How the dimension work is that we have a special mode which is called dimension. One is the modify mode and the other one is the dimension. So I'll just, let's uh, see what can I apply to this uh, arc here. I can right click also and access the dimensions mode. While in dimension mode the mouse you see indicates that we will do dimensions. And for example, here I want to apply a radius. I will just highlight my arc, will hold the left mouse button, and then I lift my mouse button. And the software shows me what the radius in this case is. So as you see, I can move and I can place it in space and I can click here. And the software immediately allows me to edit this value. Of course, I can just press uh, on outside and this will remain the same but you can also 
double click on this dimension and add it to the value you want. In this case, let's say we want the 0 0.8. As you see, we created this dimension and now everything is constrained. I'll just move back to modify mode and if I move, it will just stay and this radius always will be 0 0.8 millimeter. Let's explore a little bit more about our dimensions. What other dimensions we can apply is the distance. For example, I want to take a distance between this point and this point. The way I do it, I click here and I see a guiding line and then I can click on the other point. So now we see this dimension which is uh, shown on the screen, but I have not completed yet. I need a third click to complete my definition. So as you see here, I can move it to the right and it just takes the constraint which is only between the y um, values of these two points or if I move up it just changes the way you want to define it. So in this case I might just decide that I want this to be this value. Again in the same way you can just accept this value and this is added and it's uh, applied. Or you can create another dimension here for example between these two points and you can type in 4.75. All this is recalculated and the solver solves all the positions in, in space. If I now modify some of the points, you see everything moves, so which may not be applicable. And in some cases, you may need to lock a point in space. How we do this? You're just selecting something and then fix the position of this point. You get an indicator here of the constraint, which you can always select and delete and continue. So this is about the dimensions, now it comes to the angle constraint. Let's explore this situation here. So definitely this angle is something we need to set. The way we do this again we go to the dimensions and in this case what we do, I just click on this line and lift the mouse up and then I move it like the normal. But then I just move and highlight the other line where I need to define an angle. So then you click again and the software turns this uh, dimension into an angular dimension. So you can ch click here on the screen and then you type in the value you want. For example, 147.5. In such a way we define the angle and then you can modify it and put this in space and it always stays on the screen. In such a way you can define your sketches nicely, dimension with all the um, distances, you can put them on the side and just create the um, sketch the way you want. At any point if you want to remove something you just uh, go to modify mode and I can just click and this highlights the other I don't need. I just click on this, press delete key and my constraint is removed. In a similar way you may create a parallel relations between the two lines or you can make perpendicular. Please make sure that you don't over define the sketch because sometimes you may create relations which are additional and the solver may tell you that this is uh, the solution is over defined. So I press OK and of course everything is generated everything is saved on the disk, you can go at any point and modify your values. The same thing you can apply here, it's just another example where I can just uh, tell this to be vertical and I can just uh, create my angle here between these two lines and I can create uh, precise values, for example this, and the solver solves the, the position of all of the uh, points on the um, sketch. You can reconstruct and get this done. Let's take a look also on another capabilities of our um, sketching where we can use constraints and um, dimensions. So this is we created this body. I have a revolved surface here which is defined with this sketch. We have created all these relations here, 
you can improve and then let's take a look at this profile so what is interesting here is that actually it's a symmetric the way we can solve this in quick surfaces that we have to create a line in the middle and this one and then what a quick surface offers you is you can just click and choose that this is for construction this means that you still see these um, primitives in the sketch but when you press ok they actually not apply they are not used for the to create a body or surfaces so they are used only as a reference for example here i can just click and fix this so it doesn't move now what we can do is actually we can just select my arc using control key i'll just select another primitive and then while holding the control key i will select the other arc the software automatically offers me to make a symmetric constraint here and now i'm 100 percent sure that this is a symmetric you can apply this also to the point you can pick this point have control to select and then actually you can just uh, create a symmetry between these lines and now if I just move I press Control Z if you just move you see that they are all symmetric the same applies for this it's uh, absolutely symmetric and we can just uh, select these lines and create the symmetry relations here also for example in this case we can combine the dimensions with the symmetry so what I'll do is just take this uh, radius and just make it 31 uh, millimeter so I'm sure 100% that this is 31 millimeters I press OK and then you get your model reconstructed so this is the power of um, constraints in the dimensions in in 2D sketch. If you have any questions, you can always contact us on our support email and learn more on our website. Thank you for watching.